Hello everyone. Welcome to uh, kundorkishore.in uh, uh, webinar, weekly webinar, where we have industry leaders talking about various aspects of the corporate world. So today it is my pleasure to welcome uh, Mr. Manish Keswani. He is a successful entrepreneur, an innovator and an enthusiastic meditator. He has founded successful companies in, brand, in the brand consulting area, e-commerce, applied ITS, and the publication support services space. When he is not working, he enjoys meditation and flying drones. Having said that, I leave it to Manish to share his story uh, quickly with us and tell us a lot about the vision that plays a role in picking a tech multi beggar. We are all ears to listen to Mr. Manish Keswani. Please take it away. Thank you, Sukandaji. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, so uh, I think I think I, I won't go into go in part of it. Let's talk, talk about the vision, the vision. developing, developing. Okay, okay, okay. okay, I'd uh, I'd like to take our audience through a very simple exercise over here, you know, uh, a very simple question. Can they see themselves? Can they picture themselves, imagine themselves? Can you imagine yourself ordering pizza online using your phone like you usually do? And, and you know, that getting delivered at your doorstep or in your balcony the drone taking a shot of that uh, of that delivery and sending it to you on your smartphone saying it's been delivered now this is being done for pizzas most of you would know in many parts of the world uh, it's being experimented with in india as well apply this for medicines this was never a need earlier but uh, this pandemic which has required people to get quarantined etc has caused this need so uh, this has arisen now. And uh, so I'd say if you can imagine this, you know, uh, that that is what vision is all about. You have to be able to you have to be able to imagine uh, the future. This is not this is not just a flight of fancy. You know, you have to you have to uh, see a solution to a problem that has not yet arisen. So, so it was never a problem prior to this. It was never a problem to you know, deliver anything anywhere. Human beings went and delivered whatever was required to be delivered the way it was required to be delivered. Now, everything has changed. We don't want, we don't want human contact. So this is this which actually started off uh, you know in the developed nations as a flight of fancy uh, no one questioned it no one asked why is it this why is this going to re be required maybe human resources was scarce but it took vision for people to invest in businesses like this and say yes this is going to be useful this is amazing let's do it let's invest in this and you have a tech multi bagger so so this is this is what I'm saying. You know, all it requires is is imagination. So uh, no rocket science here. No, uh, nothing too, uh, nothing too fancy. Just close your eyes and imagine. You know, what is what is it that what is it that could require a solution? And you actually develop a, a certain vision. Now that is what you know creates this kind of uh, these these kind of multi baggers. So, so uh, look around you. Think about technology companies which are creating solutions which ordinarily seem like are they even useful? Take, for example, the case of entertainment. You know, was entertainment a problem in the early 2000s? Entertainment was never a problem in the early 2000s. It was just 
a leisure activity right it was and and uh, we in our traditional uh, homes in india were always told our parents always told us oh you are watching too much tv or you are listening to too much music entertainment was something that is that was considered as you know uh just a leisure activity you you go rent a dvd rent a video cd or perhaps uh, a video cassette depending on which era you were born in and play it look at that now while our parents were telling us that you're watching too much tv there was a company launched in 1997 which went public in 2002 on nasdaq 1997 as recent as that and it scaled up globally it launched in the uk in 2012 in india it launched around 2016 or so and it's a tech multi bagger it's not in the tech space it's in the media space it's in the entertainment space it's in the edutainment space now look at the number of spaces that it is into the company i'm talking about is netflix so look at look at the role of netflix in the entertainment industry or in the edutainment industry today i tell my son you know i think i think uh, you're not studying enough you should watch shark tank you know or you played enough now you should go watch shark tank so look at look at the role look at what a multi bagger we have here yeah so uh, so it required it required vision for someone at that point of time to be able to say there is no problem there is no problem in renting dvds in uh, in renting video cds but hey there is a company that has busied itself uh, in developing content and in being able to uh, reach consumers directly into their Uh, directly into their living rooms into their bedrooms with uh, with cutting edge content with uh, educational content i think i should invest in this you have to really be imaginative to think is there a problem that this company is solving there was none there was none what was the problem there was no problem so what did they solve if you see uh what has happened is dvds are out no one rents dvds anymore no one rents video cds anymore now it is a problem to rent a dvd it's a problem to rent a video cd so in a way if you look at it they created a problem for the future today it is become problematic in the yester years it wasn't those who invested then you know that's ima- imagine their level of success now now that's a multi bagger how difficult was it for anybody to make friends huh? you just go out step out into uh, your classes or your parks or or wherever and go out and make uh, you know make a new friend no problem no rocket science no technology application required nothing ha huh. there used to be pen friends which one could make uh, you know years ago with uh, with people across the globe now imagine what facebook has done to this space it's it's i mean at that point of time to be able to have that vision and say i want to invest in a company which is rating people on the basis of their faces if you've seen the movie the social network that's how facebook started and you know making friends and things like that uh and then to imagine that yes this company will become a multi bagger it required a vision because there was no real problem that they were solving today it has become a problem to make a friend without facebook right there was no problem earlier there was no issue so they have created a solution for a problem which never existed and thereby they've delivered a multi bagger now those who had the vision 
to invest in Facebook at that point of time. Today, you know where they are. So, so this is what I'm talking about. It requires one to be able to actually sit quietly, silently, meditate, allow one's imagination to run wild and think, talk to people about what, talk to businesses, business founders, directors about what kind of vision, what kind of a vision do they subscribe to when it comes to solving a problem. You know, it's what, what really is vision? I would think vision is just to be able to see. Is vision just about being able to imagine? Is it about, uh, is it about being able to believe in other people's, other leaders, other visionaries, imaginations and their visions? I would think the last one is the easiest, isn't it? It's really speaking the most simple way to to develop a vision because you're actually subscribing to another visionary's way of thinking, another visionary's imagination. This is the role that vision plays in being able to bag a tech multi-bagger. So if I would say if you can't develop one of your own, at least subscribe to the vision of another visionary. See, look at what problems he's trying to solve or she's trying to solve using technology. What's, what's the role that that is going to play? Not now, but in years from now, in decades from now, then you you know, you've probably discovered a multi-bagger. So I would say, uh, you know, is every problem solver a multi-bagger? No. Every problem solver, ev is every solution provider a multi-bagger? No. A visionary leadership alone is not enough. Or it's leadership into inclusive Innovation, yes. Inclusive innovation is required. And if you look at, if you look at, take the example of most Fangman companies, they've created some kind of inclusive innovation. By Fangman, I mean, you know, your uh, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, uh, G for Go, what, Google, uh, Microsoft, Apple, uh, and NVIDIA. Amongst this, look at like take the take the first example of Facebook. Okay, very 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 inclusive. It has included everybody, free for all. You're a multi bagger there. So it needs innovation needs to be inclusive in nature. Without inclusiveness, you know, uh, innovation is almost pointless. So when you're looking at companies, when you're looking at leaders, when you're looking at uh, businesses, directors, founders who are solving problems, take a step back, use your imagination to see if, if they're inclusive in their, in their innovation. Now, most, most, most tech multi-baggers of the future will need to have inclusive innovation, which is not just a best practice. Being into best practices is past. It's, it's old school. It will have to be uh, what I would say as the next practice, the only next practice. Again, take for example, Netflix or uh, Amazon Prime Video. What was, what was the way to entertainment or even education or edutainment prior to Netflix and Amazon Prime. You all know it, right? Renting video CDs and so on and so forth. Now, today there's no option. There's no option to entertainment. Theaters are shut. Movie theaters, you know, moviegoers have to watch content at home, view content at home. 
So there's no option to Netflix or Amazon Prime Video. Content that is being served in your living room is the most convenient. So they didn't, they didn't look at inclusive innovation alone. They didn't look at best practices alone. Movies were always being produced. Soaps, serials were always being produced. They did not stop at producing content using best practices. They took the next step into making sure that they become perhaps a next practice, the only possible next practice. So, so there's a combination of inclusive innovation, which is not meant only for the select few or the privileged few. It's meant for everybody. All these companies, right? And uh, and they've they've you know uh, they've innovated. They've become a next practice. It's you don't say you don't you don't have a phrase like I'm I'm watching a movie and chilling. The phrase goes Netflix and chill. Yeah. So imagine they've they've become a part of your daily lifestyle, your daily culture. So look for companies. I would say uh, part of the vision would be uh, to look for companies which are going from reactive le uh, leapfrogging to proactively pole vaulting. This is really important. Look for directors, founders, business leaders, and see if their balance sheets validate their claims or imagine their projections have, or imagine if their projections have the power to solve problems of our country or the world at large. Uh, problems not as you see them today, but potential problems. Those problems which do not exist in today's day and age, but they will perhaps probably come up in the future. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, this is this is getting more and more exciting. Like, for example, when you look at problems which are which are going to be solved in the future, who would have who would have thought of this pandemic becoming a problem? Look at the application of technology today in this space, whether it's healthcare, okay, which is uh, which reacts to the pandemic. So, for example, how do you get in touch with a doctor? How do how does somebody who is not uh, living in an area which is served well enough or covered well enough by healthcare uh, facilities get medical help or medical uh, has access to medical consultation in the first place at the at the first level so that is healthcare look at look at biomedicine look at uh, biomedical engineering there's technology being used everywhere at every sphere this is not a problem that anyone had thought will ever exist that it will cripple the world have its on have you know uh, have the world on its knees but they they kept solving problems and people who invested in in these kind of companies who said look the problem doesn't exist today today it's a matter of convenience they've they've laid their hands on some multi baggers and and we're not we're not even talking about uh, you know we're not talking about only tech companies over here. Let's take the example of uh, completely non-tech companies. Uh, let's take the example of food processing companies. Yeah, Today, a 12-year-old can go into the kitchen without being dependent on someone to cook a gourmet meal. Now, that is, that is technology being applied, right? So technology has has got applied into uh, food processing. Um, you get you get gourmet meals which are packaged, and all you do is open, uh, put it in the micro, which is again a tech product in the consumer durable space, and heat and serve. So now do you see now do you see the application of technology everywhere? That consumer durable product in the kitchen is a tech product. Uh, the processed food is, is a result of technology being applied to food. Now, what is the next thing that can happen? 
what what multi baggers do you see coming out from here i would say what can be done to innovate further in this space can all of this be done automatically can the refrigerator order for food by itself and it gets delivered automatically internet of things can be done right milk in the fridge door is getting over so the fridge orders for milk by itself and it's delivered so along in your drone along with you know everything else uh this is also delivered and you receive a message on your smartphone saying it's all done that's that's technology so look at be imaginative and look at how every sphere of life can be improved who would have thought you know who would have thought that uh technology can be used perhaps in clothing there are i i see a lot of possibilities over there i see uh fmcg companies which are into traditional clothing incorporating technology to be able to send out health updates or other updates that are required and and those are going to be potential multi baggers so so this is not a for example this is not a problem that exists as of now right there is no issue as of now we don't need to we don't need to be in constant touch with uh, doctors or healthcare providers we're all all right we're doing fine but imagine that data getting downloaded into some kind of a chip into some kind of a mechanism that can be shared with a healthcare provider should the need ever arise at the push of a button so he knows okay wow you know usually you're doing great from 10 am to 9 pm but the issue occurs usually at a given point of time and and you know he medicates you accordingly or a person is suffering from high blood pressure he doesn't know it or somebody is on the verge of developing diabetes he doesn't know it these are going to be the next tech multi baggers and they are there in every space they are there in every space they are there in the automobile space they are there which is in the personal mobility space they are there in the absolutely non tech space entertainment education education everyone's been going to school everyone you know everyone who had some money to invest invested in real estate and started a school i'm talking about a few crore rupees uh started with a few lakh rupees you know two decades ago then became a few crore rupees a decade ago and then suddenly everything changed somebody came and said everyone's going everyone's to school going but i'll bring, but the, school bring the school to your, to your place and then and then yeah, yeah you know you know the next tech multi bagger multi bagger you all know about about uh, <laughs> you know about baiju sponsoring the immune for the team that that's a tech multi bagger that's what you have to. so you got to you got to be able to imagine is there a problem so there's no problem everyone could join classes why does why one does have one to one have to institution class go but somebody saw somebody it somebody saw it, did it, did it. and, and you, you got a tech multi bagger so yeah so imagine yeah, so it is, is is what is what create, create, uh, uh vision uh, or what or what one develop so Ma manish may i jump in right now and ask sure, you sure 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 go ahead. go ahead i think uh, manish has outlined something very interesting uh especially with the example of netflix uh netflix is uh developed on what is in in uh, in uh, the technical technological jargon called as ott platform which is over the top which means it surpasses the cable platform the normal cable platform and surpasses the normal uh, um, say dish tv what we known as dish tv over there platform and it is a completely different platform which uses simple wifi technology and you need a wifi connection at home to access uh, uh access uh, these platforms like netflix prime amazon video etc etc and he has brought out a very interesting thing that this innovation has entered home especially in a, in the in the time of the pandemic and also what ott has done is uh 
we don't need uh, so like 50 crores of rupees to make a three hour movie there are people who are making uh, small uh, videos of 10 15 minutes and running serials over ott and even uh, uh, people in hollywood and most closely in bollywood they are making uh, making all these um, small movies and with very low budgets so that's where i think his talk on inclusion comes in so here is a tech company a tech, here is a technology rather which has got social inclusion uh, which has been uh, which we are able to make movies at a much lower cost so so my question therefore manish is so is technology sector is that you are bullish on uh, uh, ji, thank you so much no, no, I would, I would not technology alone. Technology alone. I would say I would tech, say tech or technology, technology. Like, like, people. People. Like, I said, like I said, from kitchen, kitchen to clothing, 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 from automobiles, from automobiles at the personal at mobility, personal mobility to, uh, to uh, mobility, mobility, internet of internet things. Of things which means, which means you, know, you my know my air conditioner should be off if my window is open, open or if my house detects that i am i am approaching uh, you know uh, my residential area then it should send a signal uh, my car should send a signal to uh, my resident saying you know switch on the air conditioning or switch on the switch on the so it's everywhere it's in the kitchen space it's in the it's FMC. In the FMC. Now, let me give you a small example. You know, let's let's talk about uh, the kitchen. I'm a foodie, so let me tell you something. I I spoke about a 12 year old being able to dish out a gourmet meal. Think about the packaging. Think about the company which is making that packaging. That's a multi bagger. Think about the company which is producing uh, the machinery to create that packaging on a global scale, at a global scale. Now, the, the capital uh, industries business, which manufactures that machinery, that packaging machinery, that is a multi-bagger. So one has to really look at the entire value chain and see, think, and apply. You know, is the packaging company going to be a multi-bagger? Is the, is the machinery that will make the packaging going to be a multi-bagger or all of them are going to be multi-baggers where in the value chain do you think uh you know will have you will have uh where which part of the value chain do you think will have the maximum impact and therefore you'll be able to spot a multi-bag i think that's a because uh in today's world uh, no industry is uh, alone they're all interconnected and there's a vast ecosystem which exists and you have to spot which end of the chain and which end of the ecosystem or which part of the ecosystem uh, is going to be uh, tech-led multi-bagger. I think that's an excellent analysis, you know. So you also spoke about uh, inclusive innovation. What is the application of inclusive innovation across various sectors um, other than the tech sector uh, itself? Uh, I would say look at look at any industry. Let's look at uh, something completely something that was completely untouched by technology. Let's look at education. Okay, look at look at how tech has applied to creating inclusiveness to a level where it doesn't matter if you are able to afford a Harvard or a Wharton. If you have the intelligence to be able to absorb their courses, go online, absorb them free of cost. Look at, look at this. Look at this very platform that we are using. If somebody had to learn about investing in stocks earlier, he had to go sit down with a stock broker, you know, uh, patronize him or patronize a teacher. How does it work? Look at what Kundan has done. He's applied technology to being uh, innovative and in order to march towards his mission of creating a million, uh, you know, million financially literate or uh, stock market literate people. So look at that. 
this is this is what inclusion is all about who would have thought it's going to be possible at at a price that is next to nothing to be able to learn so much this is an example of of inclusiveness in the absolute non tech sector it's got nothing to do with technology i'm open to other questions so uh, i think you uh, analyzed it very well and given a very apt example that uh, um, somebody like kundan has uh, uh, really taken away um, all the technology and uh, and uh, done such an innovative thing of uh, of um, uh, teaching a very important uh, subject uh, to uh, the audience at large to increase financial literacy and as you rightly said uh, at a cost of almost nothing so i think it's uh, it's a really a unique example of uh, of uh, social inclusion and particularly in an area in which uh, say uh, all the all the reports say that nearly 70% of india is not financially literate uh, all the reports from the chambers of commerce the the reserve bank and so on and so forth so i think this is a huge step in that direction uh, taken by kundan um can you share the role uh, that technology will play in let's say uh, some other companies uh, companies and company stocks like say the automobile industry where we are hearing that now with the fossil fuel fossil fuels going out of fashion so most of the cars are going to be electric cars in the future and already uh, a lot of two wheelers and rickshaw e rickshaws are all flying all over the place we can see it right in front of our eyes and so what happens to all the all the saudi aramcos in the world which today even is the highest valued company even higher than microsoft and google and all that if you see the stock exchange uh, so what will happen to the whole uh, whole space and uh, and the role that technology will play in uh, disrupting Uh, a very old industry and a very um, all pervasive industry over to you manish thank you uh, sukanta ji very very interesting question and uh, you know you probably have the next multi bagger coming in from this sector at least at least that's that's what my personal view is uh, so so watch out all those who are you know looking at queues uh for taking some unsolicited uh, advice here look at look at tesla you buy a car and today that car is in your garage it's charging you drive it it's got a better pickup better brake horsepower than your uh, fossil fuel car and every time they need to release a new model so you know if you have a if you have a traditional vehicle uh i i won't take any name i won't name any brand over here but any traditional vehicle when it launches an upgraded version you know uh, in a year or at times a year and a half at times two years sometimes six months depending on which segment they are they are operating in you feel like buying the next upgraded version when you have a tesla uh you got one all you do is you update your version they send you updates you use the phone and say okay update my car i'm accepting it since i'm not going to be driving it for the next hour or so like you update your computer you update a car and that's technology what have you bought have you bought a car have you bought a computer have you bought software uh, one wonders what has one invested in so that's the role that technology is playing now in the automobile segment and that's going to come into play here also so so watch out for uh, an upcoming multi bagger in that segment anyone uh, you know with uh, imagination should be able to see which brands which businesses are are investing in that kind of technology in india and globally yeah you're muted sukant ji you're muted we can't hear you can't hear you uh sorry uh, because i missed out sorry 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 um how do we come as close as possible to discovering a tech multi bagger i mean uh, these are very involved evolved researches but what is the kind of uh, the formula or the trick to come as close as possible to discovering a tech multi bagger i 
I would say being able to use one's imagination to the extent of creating possibilities in one's mind about improvements that can be made in every sector. So, for example, while I am sitting down over here and having this webinar with you, to tell you the truth, I'm very distracted. I may look very focused, but the fact of the matter is I'm very distracted. So I see, I see two uh, possibilities of multi-baggers coming out of this. Uh, whoever is listening, if a business founder is listening, or if, a, if uh, you know, people have already understood this space, why am I distracted? I'm thinking, how can this experience be made better for our viewers? There are, there are uh, close to a thousand viewers or perhaps a little more or less, I don't know, on this screen of theirs. How is it that they can have an experience that is as close to real as possible? Probably wearing some kind of glasses, making them feel, uh, you know, and hear so clearly that they feel they're in the room with you, with me, in the studio or in a conference room. That's one aspect. The second aspect is when I said I'm distracted, you know, uh, is there some kind of technology that can be applied to pull my attention back to uh, back to perhaps the webinar? So, so look at it, look at it this way, you know, everything that one is doing at any given point of time, one should be looking at, is there an idea? Is there disruption possible? For example, why am I, why am I wearing this jacket? It's not required. I should be in a t-shirt. Then what is the, what is the uh, innovation that can come in, in clothing? in order to be able to solve a problem that does not exist yet. Like I said, the problem does not exist yet. But if that piece of clothing can give me data after the webinar saying, you know, uh, your temperature went up or your, uh, you know, you were distracted or you were so focused, so on and so forth, you need to go for a run right now or you need to have a snack right now, you should, you should perhaps sip some water right now, then you know, you're, you're coming close to a multi-bagger. Look at what Fitbit has done. What are they? No one was so obsessed with, you know, oh, what's my heart rate? How many steps have I taken? Have I completed 10,000 steps in a day? They just started giving you the information. And then you realized how important that information was. So the problem never existed. They created a solution and then you started imagining that if I don't accept the solution, then there'll be a problem. So everywhere you look, anywhere you look, look at what can be made better. And that is what will get you closer and closer to being able to spot a tech multi-bagger. Okay, got it. Now, uh, very quickly, uh, before I uh, throw open the, uh, to the questions of my all my viewers, uh, how does one develop the vision to be able to see an upcoming multi-bagger, how, how does, what are the elements of the vision and what are the things to spot uh, so that uh, one develops that vision uh, to be uh, continuously looking at potential multi-baggers? Being able to close your eyes like this and being able to imagine. You know, when one is able to close one's eyes and imagine that there is a possibility I could be uh, live in front of a thousand people without them being in the same room as I am. It has to be done. It has to be made possible. And I'm telling you, it will be possible. Within the next few months or at the most in the next few years, webinars will change. Invest in a company that makes hardware for that uh, kind of an experience. Invest a in a company that makes software for that kind of an experience. Uh, you've invested in a multi-bagger. So imagine your imagination is your vision today. Anything and everything that you can imagine is going to become a reality. Flying cars, they're going to become a reality. I remember as a child, the first thing I wanted to do is, you know, uh, 
invent a flying car. Now it's going to be possible. Drones, they are all over the place. They're they are being used for delivery. They are being used for surveillance. I would invite the audience to tell me, you know, what is it that they can imagine? And whatever it is that they can imagine, that is their vision. Now they have to see whether that vision is being applied by business founders, by business directors, stalwarts, into creating businesses which are scalable on ar around this vision around the fruition of this vision there doesn't need to be a problem yet as long as they are offering some kind of a solution the problem will come up mani ji i think we are uh, very we're doing very well on time we have just completed 40 minutes and the balance 20 minutes i request uh, all the viewers to uh, uh, start asking questions or sharing their experiences with uh, Mr. Keswani. We don't have him all the time. He's a very busy person. So uh, I would be very glad if uh, any one of you had any questions for him, which you can uh, ask him, please. Or any comments. Uh. Yeah, I can, I can read this one, which says, can a listed holding company be a potentially next multi-bagger oh yeah yeah of course of course swapnil this is possible this is this is very 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 possible because because these are companies uh it, it depends on their leadership right look at look at what is the leadership uh of that company doing look at what the uh what is the chief strategy officer if they have a post like that where, where is he steering this company you know, uh, what is his vision? Take, for example, uh, this is completely unsolicited and it should not, it should not, it should not be construed as any kind of investment advice. Recently, there was a change of leadership in one of the top tech firms. Recently, as in I'm talking about, you know, a day or two ago, there was a change of leadership in the top, top uh, tech firms of India. Uh, and uh, the chairman, has now become the chief strategy officer and his daughter, she's now the executive chairman. So yeah, potential multi-baggers are possible from listed companies. Okay, we have another one here. Gaurav Gupta is asking in a blanket tech world, we are not exposing ourselves to an unprecedented risk or problem that might cripple operations and hit the economy. I'm sorry, I don't understand this question. Uh, in a blanket tech world, are we not? Okay, I'm sorry. Are we not exposing ourselves to an unprecedented risk or a problem that might triple operations and hit the economy? Well, that's what Gaurav, that's what spotting a multi-bagger is, right? It's an all or nothing game. In any business, it's an all or nothing game. Uh, either you're in it, if you're in it, then you are exposing yourself to an unprecedented risk or a problem. Uh, I don't know whether that kind of a problem will really cripple the operations and hit the economy. It depends on what the risks are. But uh, but there are risks. Certainly there are risks, especially if you're trying to spot multi-baggers. Now that is where, that is where you know, Kundan's uh, teachings of uh, being able to analyze risks, being able to study data, being able to study technicals, fundamentals, etc. will come into play. So vision is one aspect. Vision is the qualitative aspect, Gaurav. Very good question. Vision is the qualitative aspect. There's also a quantitative aspect. You have to take business decisions based on the qualitative as well as the quantitative aspects. Then you are reducing your risk. You are reducing the possibility of exposing yourself to an unprecedented risk. I'm sure, uh, I hope this answers your question. Okay, so we have Shantanu who's asking me, do we have any companies available in India which are listed and working in the fields of AI and ML? Yeah, wow, you know, I have some notes in which I've spoken, spoken about AI and ML and can be possible multi-baggers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I won't be able to name any listed companies uh, during this show, 
but there are companies uh, do research they are working in the areas of artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning uh, my own company is uh, dealing is is using ai and ml and we are using it in the language english language improvement solution space so i can talk about that uh, you know after the show but uh, and you can send me an email i can i can write to you about that but i'm myself also looking at companies who are in the ai ml space which are serving uh, which can improve the agrarian economy we are an agrarian economy uh, given the rate at which uh, the population is growing agriculture there's going to be a huge stress on agriculture and those in the ai ml space uh, which will serve Uh, which will serve the agricultural sector which will serve the medical sector healthcare sector um oh well they are going to be potential multi baggers so yeah ai ml certainly shantanu good question okay ramana pukela is asking me if telemedicine is going to be the future is telemedicine going to be the future if so what are the companies investing in it are you asking me names of companies raman uh, i'm sorry i won't be able to take any names during this show but uh, but yes telemedicine is not the future my friend telemedicine is the present telemedicine is the present today tell me something if one develops a fever if one develops a cough if one develops uh, a cold is he going to be daring enough to walk into a hospital through these uh, pandemic times and expose himself to a greater risk no one is going to log on to one's phone and say you know and you you can log on and have a video call with the doctor through the same platform and pay the doctor through the same platform so telemedicine is the present and there are plenty of companies investing in it uh i don't know if there are listed companies i won't take names of listed companies even if there are but uh, but there's uh, there's practo which is uh, an unlisted one and uh, yeah i'm i'm uh, i'm very uh, you know i'm very sure that platforms like these are going to grow it's a good it's a good platform it's a good business to be in that's all i can that's say that's all i can say yeah, 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 yeah. 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 okay so we have shrikant shrikant deshmukh who's asking me we have capabilities and huge potential to bring new concepts and innovation i think there are government policy issues for startups in the ground reality what is your thought sir Yes, uh, Shrikant, I I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. Um, there's a lot that is being said. There's a lot that is being uh, spoken about Make in India. You know, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you a story. You put in such a good question. It struck an emotional chord with me. And uh, since uh, Sukanta ji said we have some time, you know, when this pandemic broke out, I tied up with an IIT in India to manufacture low cost ventilators. now a ventilator typically a good quality ventilator that is being used in hospitals cost 16 lakh rupees and uh, my tie up with iit we had the patent we we received the patent from iit and i am not at all in the medical space i have no idea about this but vision uh and, and craziness as well so uh, so we got this tie up done we had access to their patent we we uh, got we went to the level of getting the bills of quantity setting up uh, you know uh, looking at possibilities of setting up manufacturing etc but there's no guarantee as to uh, with with regards to the government uh, buying these ventilators now government state government hospitals uh, the state healthcare institutions should be looking at procuring these ventilators left right and center through these pandemic times but there was no support so yeah at the ground level uh, i agree with you there's a lot of red tapeism but then uh, as as a startup uh, innovator you got to pull up your socks and say i'll overcome this i'll overcome this uh, i'll do better you know i'll make the government do better hopefully my answer helped okay debashish choudhury is asking me why aren't there enough tech companies in indian stock markets like nasdaq or nyc devashish uh, i don't have data as to how many tech companies are there in indian stock market uh, and how many are there in nasdaq and nyc but 
but what i can say is that uh, like you know there's there are nifty 50 uh, which which drives up the nifty up and down then there is the bsc 50 or the bsc 500 which drives the sensex up and down nasdaq is typically you know uh, being being an exchange of a more matured economy it's driven up and down by uh, by fang man and uh, i think it's a question of maturity of the economy and where where uh, a maturity of the economy actually decides what role those companies play in the various uh, at the various life cycle so for example fang man companies you know touch consumers blow, uh, directly whereas uh, whereas in india if you see uh, drivers of uh, companies which don't even touch uh, directly uh, you know uh, form a part of the nifty 50 or the bse sensex so i think it's a question of maturity of economy doesn't matter doesn't matter there's a lot of tech in india trust me there is and you can make a lot of money from it thank you yeah we'll have a look at the next question okay vijaya is asking can psu sector be multi bagger like isro nal i think you mean hal for defense and security not nal right yeah yeah isro has opened up no for uh, isro has opened up for private parties isro has opened up their labs now for uh, sending rockets to the uh, to the mars and to the moon and uh, everywhere so there is a there is a huge potential so look at this right elon musk uh, did you see the launch uh, vijaya did you see the launch of that rocket you know during the lockdown there was the launch of that rocket i don't know where were they sending it to the moon or to the mars or wherever they were sending it but uh, they were using the nasa facility right so nasa is the american equivalent of the isro what a lovely public private partnership or i should say government private partnership so uh, i see i definitely see possibilities like that uh, in the in the very near future i'll take a step back and go back to the previous question there will be hurdles but those hurdles will be overcome by visionary leaders by thought leaders yeah and crazy people as well go ahead next question Sunil Malu is asking me if the future and oil of gas about the future of oil and gas industries, especially refineries. Ah, you're putting me a question directly about RIL. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Sunil. I won't be able to say much. I don't have much insights into that sector directly speaking, but uh, but I would say that currently the sector is hit. There will be a bounce back, but there's one thing that I want to tell you. and uh, today are you seeing who's competing with airlines for example airlines are the largest single largest consumer of uh, oil and gas right for as fuels for their airplanes who's competing with airlines because airliners aren't taking off aircraft aren't taking off due to the pandemic it's the video conferencing system it's it's your tech companies like uh, like this uh, platform that we are on streamyard or uh, zoom or whatsapp video so tech is competing with oil and gas industries so look at things a little differently if you are looking at uh, developing a vision to spot a multi bagger then think of things a little differently over here you'll be able to spot one I can't say about the future of oil and gas industries especially refineries I don't have much of an idea over here but I've given you a hint as to how you can think in order to move your trades or move your investments in a given direction thank you next question okay avinash kolte do you feel the vision that we have could be a potential solution to the problem that never existed but if the vision that we had could be replaced by other substitutes so how to qualify the vision yeah wonderful question see i spoke about this but i'll i'll repeat myself over here it's a very good question 
vision cannot be qualified by qualitative analysis alone there has to be a quantitative analysis of the vision for example if a company is saying that you know you can have uh, you can have you need not fly from place to place for business you can have virtual reality you know replacing business meetings so there should be some calculation how many business meetings are being held how many business meetings can be replaced by virtual reality numbers numbers avinash only numbers projections uh, reprojections you know actual uh, actual performance across several quarters that is what can help you qualify uh, qualify if the vision is going to fructify is going to see fruition in some format or not so so since the problem doesn't exist you can't say uh, you can't say for sure what is the quantification of that vision or if the vision is qualified enough or no but to some extent numbers will will you know give rise to some leads that you'll have for for netflix was doing better even before uh, netflix was doing very well even before the pandemic during the pandemic its numbers simply rose zoom was doing well even before the pandemic during the pandemic wow it went through the roof but they had some numbers so numbers and numbers alone uh, qualify the vision yeah next question so maybe this would be the last question because we are very close to the time we are very close to 6 o'clock and uh, uh, i want to thank kundan you want to say something so hello everyone hope i'm audible and uh, is it echo echo problem or any issue am i audible guys can someone confirm because i had an issue i'm audible right okay great so thanks a lot manish for uh, giving the insight on the importance of vision in identifying multi bagger i would like to address one question here which was coming from a lot of people and uh, this question was about tell us one sure shot formula how to identify the multi bagger and another thing which people were asking also is you are giving me example from us or the other country you give me the example from our country so guys two two part here which i want to mix together and want to take your 5 minutes to explain this piece what manish has already explained but i'm going to put it in my own words okay so see uh, to understand or learn new concepts you always have to take referential examples now india has grown as a service economy from agricultural economy so how the transition happen is at society level we were growing grains and other stuff then we went into the product industry we started manufacturing stuff and then we came to the service economy unfortunately for india what happened that we jumped from agrarian economy to service economy now when we talk about this manufacturing thing obviously product comes into our mind now if we talk about even it industry what happens that we have been not making products the way china has been making manufacturing products hardcore products similarly all software products were being manufactured in the european countries or american country why because it was very obvious technology were adapted there first it's a waterfall mechanism if i ask you who will supply the most number of yoga teacher then you would say india which is very obvious right again i am getting the yoga <laughs> element here because manish uh, focuses a lot on yoga and which is a good thing it's our own uh, this thing so so similarly when technology came into uh, the picture it's it's us where most of the innovation were happening and why they were happening for that also we have to understand the ecosystem only when you understand this ecosystem you will be able to understand so see uh, in service economy you have tcs infosys wipro cognizant you take the name of this company what happens there you hire people get the project start billing them from the very first month 
okay so the investment what you do is probably buying 10 laptops hiring 10 people whom you will have to pay after a month maybe you can start with seven founders like mr narayan murthy did there is a great example for us and without even having a subingal rupee investment start a greatest company one of the greatest company from the indian arena which is a service sector company infosys but for product you need a lot of time to develop you need time you need patience we are a developing economy you know after independence we have struggled a lot our uh, our whole enthusiasm has been you know beaten by uh, people who ruled over us and sorry i'm i'm going a little nationalistic here right now but then this is the reality we, we were a poor country. We didn't have, we still don't have anything like, you know, if I don't want to work for a month, someone will give me money to run my family. What we can call is Berojgari Bhatta in India, which is there in US. People get that money, which can at least help them survive on the fooding and lodging. That kind of social security is there. If you talk about WhatsApp, what you can see there that their founders were very common people will into four years of you know a zone where they were not interacting to anyone getting the minimum of the supply for the living and got something like whatsapp which was sold to probably 10 billion dollar to facebook right so we have to learn from it that you know we are graduating in that direction that time will come and i personally also see that there will be many companies which will be SaaS companies software as a service companies whose time is coming in india and I won't mind even taking the name. And many of you would be knowing even this name. I'll call about Zoho. I'm the user of that product. I have used them. Look at the ease. Look at the look of the product and so many other things, you know. So I can use Zoho as a replacement of my even Gmail. I look up to Zoho up to that standard. Chennai based company founded, bootstrapped, doing really great and we, I mean, this time will come even in India. So there is no such formula where you can directly go and grab probably one company, which you can say that this is a multi-bagger company. But what exactly you can do basically right now is be prepared to at least understand the vision of those people who will come and show around. It could be one of the person who is right now attending this session as a techie may think that, okay, I have earned enough maybe the saving of 50 lakh rupees into my account and I'll focus on creating and building one product and it's okay for me even if I don't earn for a year. I mean, it will happen slowly. It will happen slowly. And Manish gave you those examples from US because unfortunately, we don't have enough examples from this country and it is completely fine because we are young economy. We are young economy. You may call that we are 75 year old we are 78 year old, I would call we are probably 30 year old. Okay, only after liberalization and globalization, when we started getting this external jobs in the IT and BPO and all those stuff, we started doing innovation only when the licensee Raj got killed, then only we started doing some innovation on the manufacturing side also. So this is bound to happen guys. Okay. I have launched this course not to tell you in this course that what is the multi bagger. Manish is also one of the learner only. He came forward. He's one guy who has his own company doing really great in his life. I wish him good luck for that. You know, so he's sharing you that experience means he is right now geared enough to spot on any such company which may have the similar kind of vision what probably Facebook, WhatsApp and other company had. Now, the whole point here is something you have to understand. Nothing survives for always. Everything gets destructed. Fortune 500 company list get revised every year. So, guys, it's the time for India. You know, it's the time for India. You may create your own Facebook. You never know. StreamYard will be completely killed and a new StreamYard will be used by Indians, made by Indians. So, but, but right now we are not at that level for sure. But we have to go there and that's how we have to probably, you know, take this uh, whole uh, learning from Manish also. That Manish told you what exactly is the reality of India. If he would have enough example from the India, he would have certainly given you that. Okay. And that's, that was my take. I, I got to learn a lot from Manish into this video. I was listening very patiently and uh, uh, 
uh, it, it's like most of the time I, I got habit of like staying behind the camera. This was sorry in front of the camera. This time I was behind the camera and enjoying the show really well. So thanks a lot, Manish. I would still want you to give at least four five minutes of you know the summary of overall thing. What there may be many junior people, even I'm junior to you, who can learn from your own personal experience in this startup also. Because you know, right now when I see that people should be aware enough to a spot on good company, this is why I launched the course. Now I feel vice versa. I feel that now we should probably have a lab where we can make more and more founders who can basically come beat the crony capitalism and have you know good companies built where Indians can invest and grow their money equally. So anything about your startup journey would be really a uh, helping thing for those people who want to start something, Manish, if you can add, we have enough time. I mean, we, I can still see 437 people here and I'm sure they will be very, very happy uh, listening to you about your startup journey as well. People who just came for the lecture, maybe that time is over, but I'm damn sure here that there will be so many people who would want to hear and will be very happy listening to your entrepreneurial journey. Thanks. My mic was muted, so that's why I signaled. Thanks, uh, Kundan, for all the kind words. And uh, thank you for uh, expatiating on uh, why I gave uh, examples from the American economy and uh, more, uh, more from NASDAQ than from uh, the Bombay Stock Exchange. Uh, also, I wanted to make sure that you don't uh, err on the side of uh, on the wrong side of SEBI, you know, being a training company, I didn't want to take any names over here. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, to tell you my story, you know, it started like, like any other uh, startup begins. You know, it started in a small uh, boring room filled with uh, a lot of exciting dreams. You know, I started as a teenager. I saw that uh, that advertising or branding, as we knew it in the late '90s, was uh, was kind of boring. It needed to be creative. It needed to be strategy oriented, and that's how I started offering, you know, brand communication design services, uh, strategy based brand communication design services. Being a first generation entrepreneur, I was scared of bank loans, you know, so I kick started my venture on a on the two wheeler I owned and started selling really high value services, strategy services at really low prices. And that was the beginning of uh, this brand communication design service provider that that we actually launched. Um, we went on to serve some really big brands including uh, including some multi baggers zensar technologies uh, was our client you know about 20 years ago so now i can take that name because because they used to be our client mercedes benz uh, used to be our client many years ago so uh, so yeah that's how that's how we began and then uh, of course we got i got into different businesses so we got into e-commerce um, when e-commerce was not known in India. So I'm talking about, about close to 19, close to 19 years, years ago years. when we got into e-commerce, we were into exports of uh, eyewear using the e-commerce route from India. And uh, then along the way, a lot of things got into the hospitality industry purely by chance because we were serving the real estate industry as brand communication solution providers. So I thought this is a good, this is a good opportunity. Let's get into uh, the hospitality space, which is sort of underserved in terms of uh, a no frills yet uh, five star level service departments or three star level service departments. Then, of course, uh, got into the publication support uh, space purely by chance. And uh, again, we are the only players in India which offers uh, publication support services globally using only the e commerce route purely e-commerce so uh, so that's about my story in uh, in a nutshell really i would really encourage uh, you all to come up with your questions um yeah 
So there is one over here, Yashwant Reddy, who's asking, sir, we are not afraid of starting anything. We are afraid of consequences. How can we overcome it? Lovely question. Lovely question. Like I told you, being a first generation entrepreneur, I was I was very scared of a bank loan, something that was looked down upon in my family. It is still looked down upon in my family, in fact. You know, so uh, how can you overcome the fear of consequences? Think of what the consequences can be, Yashwan. There, you know, risks and rewards are always commensurate, which means the potential consequences of things not going in your favor can be quite drastic. Will you be able to manage at least the basics? If you are able to manage the basics, it's about mind control. If you are able to manage the basics and say, yeah, you know, I think, I think it's okay if I lead my life in a certain manner, but at least I will have tried, then go ahead. Then there's nothing to fear. But if you say, oh, I'm going to lose this. And uh, if I lose this, then, you know, I'll take some drastic steps, some negative steps. Then entrepreneurship is not for you. One has to be very stable in one's thinking. Don't be afraid of consequences, but consequences can be. Good question. I think it's a very relevant question. Write down what the consequences can be. If you can live through those consequences, then go ahead and take that step. Muted. Muted. Okay. Sorry, Manish. Uh, I want to take up one question, actually. So from very long time, some people are asking, should we invest in NYSC? and uh, Nasdaq companies or Indian companies, okay? So guys, uh, spotting opportunity is something, I mean, I'm, I'm taking up this question because it has been asked many times. So why do you want to invest? For your future, right? Now, where's your future? Your future is not in US, my friend. Our future, our children's future is in India. There are reasons why I would not invest into NYSC company or Indian company. Now, this is a personal view of mine. I simply don't want to invest or send out a single penny out of this country. This world might have become a global village. Fine. I'm a global citizen. Fine. I have respect for every country and every citizen of this planet, Mother Earth. Again, fine. But then that the balancing act has not happened yet. We are called third world. And we will become worse first world only when we use our resources here. So the moment you say that you want to invest into NYSE company, you might be a smarter investor than me looking at the current scenario. But then you have to also understand one thing that if your neighborhood is not affluent enough, if your own countries have not better infrastructures, those infrastructures will be built out of the taxes which these corporates will give. So our own capitalism have to take a leap of faith. It's not only about becoming rich ourselves. It's not about keeping our house only clean from inside. It's also about keeping the society clean. It's also about making our country rich. I can completely understand some facts about the crony capitalism in India. But then the point is, we only have to come forward and we have to be more aware and ask more questions. You can always go to all the investors meeting, ask questions, even when you are just holding one share of any company, you can write about them. Okay. So even after all the issues in India, it's we only who have to build India. And for that only reason, I, my take would be hundred percent of my investment should be in Indian companies. And before even in any Indian companies, my own company. Many people ask me, where can I invest my money? I can, And I always tell that I can teach you the stock market. But if you really want to invest your money at the rightest place, it should be always your company if you can start. India has a possibility of starting 10,000 plus companies at any point of time and coexisting together. People come and ask me whether I can launch a course, a similar course like yours on a stock market. I teach them, I train them just because of one reason, because I know that I'll be not a enough teacher to teach all. We are 130 crore people. We are 130 crore people. So many businesses can coexist together. 
and these businesses will need money you know so the moment you think about investing into other com uh, countries I, I i would still say you go and invest into if you are very humanist in nature and think about the whole world as a global country go and invest in nepal because they are below us the balancing act has not happened yet okay so till the time balancing act don't come into the picture let's start investing into indian companies let's start making new companies and giving investors more choices to invest into the right companies okay and for that this awareness is very very important okay uh, that's the answer for anyone who asked whether they should invest into nysc or nse companies that's my answer and it could be a very emotional answer or an answer which is not uh, correct from the bookish perspective of a you know investment advisor but then uh, that's my answer at least uh, okay i'll i'll give it to manish the guest of the session and has already and answered already this answered. any any more questions any others so, so sorry sorry this streamyard is today so sorry i i guys i think it was a good session and uh, thank you thanks a lot sukanta sir for hosting this session uh, idea is that uh, sir will be always hosting this session and getting more speakers anybody who is listening to this there are a few announcements also from the core side guys we have started a competition on the facebook group this competition is about helping your peers so a lot of unwanted questions were coming in that group and people were not motivated enough to answer correctly or maybe in a elaborative way to the right question so we have launched one competition 10 people will be awarded a cash prize of 5000 rupees on 15th august which is like just one month from today who will be answering their peers a lot so if you have not joined that group i'll uh, show you how to join that group okay uh, sorry guys um, i'll i'll give it to you sukanta sir i just want to explain this in 2 minutes because so many people are live here so if you go to facebook let me first share my screen So if you go to Facebook and write here a complete course on Indian stock market, uh, out of thirty thousand learners, nine thousand five hundred have joined. If you have not joined, please join here. You are going to compete into one competition where if you answers questions of your juniors who joined the course after you in a in a good way, elaborative way, helping them, you can be one of the ten winner. This is right now one time event. but i'm planning to fund it with much larger uh, you know prizes more more than uh, 5000 rupees but we will see it from the next time next month i want to see that whether this is working fine or not and more people are getting uh, benefited or not so guys everybody who has uh, been taking this uh, session right now this is time for a thanking note for both manish sir and sukanta sir for hosting the session i would rewrite the comments from you guys for manish whatever you have to say as a thanking note this is the culture we have students always give their thanking note and i read out for them maybe sukanta sir can today read out any any yeah um I, a lot of thank yous from a lot of people thank you panelists good reaction very well said so thank you so so many thank yous uh, which is uh, and uh, uh lot of thank yous are pouring in so i think i need to end the session now with uh, complimenting mr manish keswani for an excellent session by the way it's a very difficult topic when actually we were discussing the topic yesterday i was thinking in my mind how will you talk about this topic because a vision is a very ephemeral thing it's like a ghost how do you explain it and you have explained it by closing your eyes and using your meditation and yoga uh sort of power you have explained it so simply to everybody and you have taken a lot of interesting examples especially the entertainment example and the automobile example and brought together a completely new perspective 
of how to look at the Indian uh, corporate uh, world, you know. So thank you once again, and I would like to end from my side. Thank you. Thanks, Manish. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks a lot. Lovely speaking to all of you. Bye bye. So thank you everyone for joining. As it always happens, there will be a blog which will be created. You can ask your questions here. And uh, there is a very big compliment for you, Sukanta sir. Sukanta sir, your voice is mesmerizing. Someone is writing this. <laughs> so, so OK, there is a question from Jaldeep. Uh, when then I had one more question. Isn't it the VCs who get the first mover opportunity to invest in multi-bagger businesses? Yes, I missed mentioning this. So the new leg which is coming out of these new companies, obviously these VCs are grabbing at an early level. But then Jaldeep, that's what I'm trying to say here that uh, these are part and parcel, you know. If VCs are coming and grabbing, uh, I mean, there's no skip out of it. That's the part of the capitalism. You have to deal with it. Most importantly, uh, for Indians right now, at least, even if these VCs are coming, why I feel happy at least with this factor is at least these money is coming from outside to India, which is a good thing. The only bad thing is most of our these startup heroes, they have opened the companies in Singapore or Hong Kong or Tokyo. They register there and pay taxes there. Again, my personal view. I still feel VC part is OK. The only un -okay thing is uh, they are not registering companies in India. They should be registering companies in India. I don't want to take name. That would like, look very personal. But then uh, that's the reality. So if we ever open our company, we will register only in India. I mean, the team of my, I also got a team now. Even Manish was offering yesterday that he is ready to mentor and all. So, so guys, we have to you know get these things going. This philosophy is going also on the ground level that how we all can help each other and fight against these consequences. Otherwise, VC is a reality. VCs are getting the first mover advantage of getting the maximum money is a reality. No doubt about that. The opportunity what people got to invest at the level of Infosys and Reliance. I don't think we will get that opportunities with other companies who are operational and doing really good businesses in a startup ecosystem. But some other time, we will discuss about this. OK, great, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we are done for the day. And uh, a blog will be created. Manish will answer on that blog on his leisure period whenever he is free. You can ask questions. You can connect with Manish there on that blog. That blog will be shared to you all through your registered email ID with the courses. Thank you very much. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. Thank you.